So on today's episode of We Hold the Keys, let's talk about stigmatized properties. Stigmatized properties. Um, I think a lot of people may not know what a stigmatized property is. Mm -hmm. So it's basically disclosing or not disclosing in the case of Colorado that there was a death, a murder, or that the house is potentially haunted. Which you don't kind of, I mean, I think the murder thing is a little creepy. Obviously we don't. I kind of want to know if somebody was murdered in my house. I know it's, it's a weird thing, but, um, I've had several properties that I've sold where someone, the, you know, the owner had passed away in the house, but we, so you're saying we don't have to disclose that to potential buyers. You do not. Right. Unless, I mean, I did have a case, same thing. The wife had passed away and the husband wanted the potential buyers to know about it. Mm -hmm. So we did disclose it. It was just in writing, but otherwise it's not something that has to be put out there. If someone says, um, you know, my house is haunted, which actually makes me think about, you know, my mom was a realtor in Illinois yep. and Alton, Illinois has actually, Oh, what are those old shows? Like ghost hunters or have you ever on the yeah. discovery channel or yep. whatnot? That town has been featured on that show. Oh, funny. Um, and my mom listed a house once and they said, we just want to let you know that it's haunted. She walks up the stairs every night and checks on us. And then she goes back down and that's the only time we see her. Oh my God. <laughs> so they were living in the house when my mom listed it. They moved out. My mom went to check on the home. It had been smoked in. The walls were completely yellowed. And my mom was like floored because oh, well. she didn't know where it came from. That is creepy. Lo and behold, it never sold. Yeah, no surprise. <laughs> right, so big there's, surprise. There's not disclosure, but then there's, there's just properties that aren't gonna sell. <laughs> right. But I mean, we're in a historic town, so I am I know that there's, people feel that a lot of the, the buildings around, at least on Elk Avenue, are haunted. I haven't come across it in my real estate career yet where we've actually like had a house that was felt haunted to people. Right. But you did, you had a house in Gunnison that you represented, right? When the, when they bought it, but they didn't know? I did. Yeah. I didn't know, they didn't know, nobody knew. They didn't disclose it, right? Yep. Because it wasn't a requirement. So um, oddly enough, I was talking to the client and they've owned the house now since, I think that was 2014 okay. that they purchased it. Right. And their daughter had a friend over and the friend was like, I've been in this house before, but I can't pinpoint it. Well, her dad came to pick her up and he was like, our family friends used to live here. And unfortunately, their daughter had committed suicide. Oh no. And oddly enough, their other younger daughter, who's six, um, complains about not wanting to sleep in her bedroom because somebody pulls on her ankles. Ah, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and so now they're like, well, mystery solved. They think it is haunted from the young wow. girl. And they're actually going to sell the home and they had asked me that question. Do, yeah. do we need to tell someone else? And I said, well, according to the state of Colorado, no. So we interesting. Don't. And I know the state looks at it because I think some people you could say, hey, this is haunted. And some people have no belief in any of that. Right. So that's where that stigmatized. Yeah, I mean, you, it's not there. We're not physically seeing ghosts. <laughs> right. And it's all, it can be, people can believe it's it can made be up. fabricated. Yeah, fabricated totally. for sure. Well, my brother had the same thing. He just, <clears throat> they've lived in their house, what, two years now? and mm -hmm. or a year and they uh, his wife has always felt like there was something weird happening in the house and there's yeah. knocking and stuff and just the other day the same same deal this woman came over my brother's friend and said oh God, i've been in this house before and so and so died in here and he was like wow what <laughs> you know <laughs> like what do you mean somebody died and so it's uh, you know i mean death is death it happens Right. But when you have kind of like weird things going on, it you gets a little wonder. eerie feeling. It gets a little, little, Speaking very of the hair on the back of my neck. I know. All right. Are there ghosts in here? <laughs> uh, all right. So what, what does have to be disclosed in Colorado? Let's talk about that. So obviously any adverse material facts of the home. So you have a crack in the foundation or the roof leaks. Um, methamphetamine is an interesting one mm -hmm. because another thing with the state is that if there was meth, cooked, made, stored, whatever one may do with it. Mm -hmm. um, if it has been rehabbed per the state and all the proper permits were pulled, it does not have okay. to be disclosed. So it could be a full blown meth lab, but then the state comes in and re rehabs the property, guts it probably, takes it down to the studs and then it's rebuilt. So then that doesn't have to be disclosed. That is correct. Hmm. Although um, oddly enough, I heard, it was probably a good couple years ago now, there was a property in St. Louis because I'm assuming Missouri has the same laws. Mm -hmm. 
um, a woman was pregnant, went to the doctor, they did blood work and they were like, we need to, we need to have a talk. You have meth and oh, no. she had traces of it in her blood. Oh my gosh. And turns out the house had not, it had been rehabbed properly, but it's so, still there. And there, I cannot remember the name of it, but there's an organization in Denver right now because the woman's daughter did the same thing with the house in Denver, purchased it, and then they found traces of it. Wow. So there's companies now that can actually go out and test if there's ever been meth smoked or what. Uh, do you, I don't even know what you do with it. That but. is why we live in Crested Butte. I mean, I know it's here <laughs> and I know it exists, but one of the reasons is that we're not in a big city dealing with major meth labs and crime. I know, it's crazy. So it's pretty cool that we so. don't have that. I always tell people our biggest crime is uh, bears breaking into your property. Uh, right? And that happened to us. That will be a whole other podcast, but. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, stick bears. with those properties. That's a good one. And um, I haven't had too many disclosure issues. I think. Uh, there's been, there's always something, but in Colorado, it's a little bit, um, it's just not a great way to, we don't have a good way to do it. And California, I know is really strict. Mm -hmm. So people come from California and expect these disclosures that are more accurate to what they're used to and come to Colorado and buy a property. And they're like, this isn't enough information for me. Right. So we end up having some issues with, with clients on disclosures when it comes to that stuff. But Stick to the highest properties. Do not have to disclose. No. Good to know. Don't.